applying to your first cybersecurity job can be confusing and a little bit confronting. And if you're wondering which cybersecurity jobs are suitable for absolute beginners, then by the end of this video, you will know exactly which jobs to apply to and how to do it. People get hired to entry level cybersecurity jobs all the time. In fact, on a weekly basis, I post success stories from individuals who followed advice on this YouTube channel and landed their first cybersecurity job. So how do they do it? Let me show you. We're gonna go over those five crucial big challenges that you need to overcome when you apply to entry-level cybersecurity jobs, especially if you're starting from zero, with a bonus point at the end of this video to help you find those hidden jobs that don't even get advertised. Starting at the beginning, challenge number one, which cybersecurity jobs should you apply to? So you've been studying for a while and maybe you follow the roadmap on my videos, but now you're confused. Which jobs should you apply to? Now, what most people don't know about cybersecurity jobs is that job titles don't actually matter. This can be very confusing for someone who's new to this field. So a job could be about blue teaming where you analyze and respond to cyber threats, or it could be under the umbrella of ethical hacking where you try to hack into a company to find weaknesses and then you help that company fix those weaknesses. Or the job could be a GRC related job where you spend all your time conducting risk assessments and compliance work to ensure that the organization is doing what they should be doing to protect their data. Yet, all of those jobs could have the exact same job title, which could be something like cybersecurity analyst or cybersecurity specialist or even cybersecurity engineer, which makes no sense. But this is the world that we live in. So what should you do? Well, this means that when you do a job search, especially when you're trying to find your first cybersecurity job, then you should filter for very generic keywords. I personally prefer to just use the word cyber. So in the job search, just write the word cyber, but then you'll actually need to go and read through the job descriptions. This is the only way that you'll be able to know what that job entails. Just looking at the title will tell you little to nothing about the actual job. With all that in mind, let me show you how to do it. So no matter where you live, you can simply start with LinkedIn. Even if you don't have a profile ready, just log in to LinkedIn and use it as a job search website. It's a very powerful job search website. So let's go and let's filter for cyber and let's choose the city that you live in for example New York and let's hit enter now as you can see there are so many jobs it is showing me senior jobs because it matches my profile but in your case you'll get a different set of jobs but even then there's extremely senior roles like chief information security officer business information security officer but there is also cyber security analyst which is something that you can do. Now, as you read through the job descriptions, broadly speaking, you will find that non-technical cybersecurity jobs are more beginner friendly than technical cybersecurity jobs. So anything under the GRC umbrella will be a little bit easier to get into than the technical cybersecurity jobs. And even within the technical cybersecurity jobs, you will find that there is a higher chance of finding a beginner friendly role under the umbrella of blue teaming or the defensive side of cybersecurity more so than the offensive side of cybersecurity. Once you read the job description, you can quickly start to see which ones are more beginner friendly. Now, if you want to target non-technical cybersecurity jobs specifically, go to grcmastery.com and scroll all the way down to the FAQ section. So let's go there, grcmastery.com. And as we scroll down all the way to the end, I'm giving you the job titles of all the non-technical cybersecurity jobs. So you can simply copy paste some of those titles in your job search function. For example, let's try with cybersecurity risk analyst and see what we get. As you can see, GRC roles in general are more beginner friendly. Now, just a word about job search website. LinkedIn is universal, so it will work in the majority if not all the countries in the world but you'll also find that there might be another job website that's local to you that will have a lot of jobs advertised for example in the US there is monster jobs and there is dice and indeed in the UK they have read in Australia we have seek.com.au so what I recommend you do is first use LinkedIn this should be the main job search website that you use and then secondary to that pick another popular job search website in your country this way you don't miss out 
out on any job that's advertised. Now, the first problem that you will face when you do a job search is that a lot of the jobs will ask you to already have one or even three years of experience and some jobs will ask you to have 10 years of experience. This is perfectly normal. Someone in the comments on my YouTube channel basically wrote a comment to tell me that he wants all the jobs to be advertised with zero experience requirement, zero knowledge requirement, and he also wanted to do that job remotely from his bedroom, of course, without investing in any training courses whatsoever. And he wanted that job to pay him six figures. This is fantasy, this is not a plan. So yes, in the real world, a lot of jobs will ask you for experience, but there will be jobs that ask you for no experience at all. Desirable jobs like cybersecurity will always be competitive. That's because everyone wants to do it. You don't wanna pick a job that no one wants to do, trust me. Now, all this means to you is that you will need to put in effort in your studying and your training to help you stand out. And trust me, a little bit of effort will go a long way. Most people end up quitting after they do one or two very basic entry-level certifications. But now what most people don't know about those jobs that are advertised, that are asking for experience, is that a lot of them can actually be entry-level, especially the ones that are only asking you for one or two or even three years of experience. You can perform those jobs as an entry-level candidate. The way you make up for that experience requirement is by doing hands-on training and certifications and labs. This way you can build up that experience, that knowledge in a lab, which will help you be competitive when you apply to those jobs so yes you should be applying for entry-level jobs that are not asking for any experience but you should also be applying to those jobs that are asking you for one or two or even three years of experience this is how most people get hired now don't ask me in the comments which certification is best which training is best I talked about those training and certifications in this video so please check it out now that we know which jobs to apply to we're ready to start applying Almost. There is one more thing that we need to take care of before we hit that apply button, which is challenge number two, resumes and cover letters. But before we continue, a word from our sponsor, NordPass Business. NordPass is an intuitive password manager for business and individuals, which is ideal for improving productivity. In 2024, the average numbers of password per person is 168 passwords. This is an increase of nearly 70% in just over three years. Not only only that, but people waste 11 hours per year just resetting their passwords, which result in a staggering $5.2 million in productivity loss for big organizations, which makes NordPass business the ideal solution because it makes managing passwords a lot more efficient with easy to configure password policies. In fact, 81% of data breaches are caused by poor passwords. But the good news is with NordPass, you can create strong passwords by default. This is a huge improvement in security. Not only that, but with NordPass Business, you can share credentials, credit card information, sensitive data and PIN codes securely among your teammates without sacrificing convenience. With full and limited rights and proper access control lists to ensure members only have access to what they need, which is a fantastic use case for NordPass Business for organizations who care about security. Now, research has shown that it takes an organization an average of 121 days to detect data breaches which is insane but with NordPass they have the data breach notification feature which will allow you to change compromised passwords before any damage is done but best of all you can try NordPass business for free for three months and they've given us an exclusive crazy deal which is a 20% discount you can find all of this at nordpass.com slash unix guy and make sure to use the code unix guy at checkout it's a limited time offer and back to the video now some jobs will ask you to submit a cover letter. Cover letter is simply a short word document that we attach with our job application. Now I'm not gonna lie, cover letters are an outdated concept. As a hiring manager, I personally will never ask you to submit a cover letter. However, we still have a lot of jobs in this day and age that are still asking you to submit a cover letter. So I don't want you to miss out on a job application just because you didn't submit a cover letter. I've seen it happen. So what I want you to do, if the job is asking for a cover letter, simply submit one. Now you don't even have to bother writing one. I'm gonna put one up on the screen, pause the video and just write this down. As you can see, it doesn't need to say a lot about your expertise because that's what your resume and CV is for. Cover letter is simply a short paragraph introducing yourself and expressing your interest in that particular role. It kind of tells the organization that you've actually read the job description and you're not just blindly 
hitting apply. Now speaking of resumes, I made your life a lot easier. I've created a free entry-level cybersecurity resume that you can download at unixguy.com slash free. All you need to do is download it and tweak it with your details and your current training courses and certifications that you've done. And now that we have both our cover letter and resume ready, this is where I will lose some of you unfortunately because this is where fear and self-doubt will start to kick in. You want to apply to jobs but you're not sure if you're ready maybe you're not sure if you're good enough and when it comes down to it you're really just scared of rejection i'm not gonna lie it's nerve-wracking to be putting yourself out there and trying to change career into something completely new especially if you're starting from zero so how would you know if you're ready and more importantly when should you start applying to cyber security jobs this is challenge number three how do i apply to jobs and am i even ready to do it now the first thing that you need to do is i want you to acknowledge that you will never ever be Ready. there will always be something that you need to learn or this particular training course that you want to finish or this completely new topic that you feel that you don't know enough about this is normal no one knows everything especially those who think they know everything trust me they don't the second thing I want you to keep in mind is that trap that some of you will fall in is to think that you need a certain set of certifications because that job is asking for those certifications I actually had a conversation with a guy that I met in a security meetup his name is Kevin he works as an electrician here in Australia and he was actually asking me what are the recognized certificates in cybersecurity and I can see where this confusion is coming from in Australia to be an electrician you need the license this license will enable you to practice as an electrician now in cybersecurity we don't have a set of recognized certifications or license that enable us to be cybersecurity professionals the cybersecurity and the IT industry overall is not a regulated industry so get it out of your head that there is a secret list of recognized certificates that are the cornerstone of landing cybersecurity jobs. It doesn't work that way. Instead, there are a certain set of skills. You can acquire those skills through a uni degree or through your community college or through an online course or even through hands-on experience on the job. Now, when a job is asking you for a certain certifications, sometimes those are hard requirements, so they need you to have them. Still apply and see what happens even if you don't have them. But more often than not, they are just desirable. The hiring manager wants to make sure that you have certain set of skills that are part of those certifications. But that doesn't mean that they will reject you simply because you didn't pass an exam. Yes, that might happen, but more often than not, those are just desirable. So what I want you to know is if you started the journey of studying for cybersecurity, the time to start applying for jobs is now. Hit that apply button. Don't wait until you have this imaginary set of qualifications that will make you the great candidate that never gets rejected. This will never ever happen rejection will always be part of the process everyone get rejected you will get rejected I get rejected everyone gets rejected this is just how things work usually when I'm hiring for a position I need to interview a certain number of candidates and at the final stage of the interview it's very common for us to have more than one good candidate so eventually I'll need to pick one that doesn't mean that the other candidates are not good so that's how it really works which means if you're serious about a career in cybersecurity you need to acknowledge accept and understand that getting rejected is simply a part of the process and it's not a reflection on the world is crashing and the economy is ending and the AI apocalypse is coming. This is simply not true. This has always been the case in the professional world. Getting rejected, it's not personal. It's just the way things are done. And now that you've been studying and you finally managed to hit that apply button and you've applied to so many jobs and after so many tries, you get an email inviting you for an interview. Now what? Well, this is the fourth challenge that you need to overcome, which is cybersecurity interview preparation when you get invited to an interview the first instinct that you will have is to go and search for cybersecurity interview questions and answers and to go and memorize them I used to do that and I'll usually end up in those random blogs and websites giving me a list of so many questions and I'll even go on Glassdoor and it will ask me to pay for a subscription I've done all of those things so you don't have to Trust me, it doesn't work. Don't memorize interview questions and answers. Don't do it. I repeat, 
do not memorize interview questions and answers. The reason is, first, there is no stock standard questions that we ask in cybersecurity interviews. Every interview is going to be different. So memorizing random interview questions you found on the internet is not going to help you pass that interview. And second, and more importantly, is that I've seen the candidates who try to memorize things and honestly, they come across as robots. They usually don't know what they're talking about and it's not a great way to make a first impression. If you want to smash the interview and do well, then you need to understand that the only way to do it is by knowing your stuff. There are no shortcuts. You can't memorize a list and weasel your way into a cybersecurity job. You cannot fool the hiring manager by just memorizing a random bunch of things. It doesn't work that way. We are not idiots and we can quickly tell when someone is not honest. So instead of wasting your time looking for interview questions and answer, instead spend that time in studying, learning and doing the proper hard work that you know you need to be doing. So don't look for shortcuts. It doesn't work. Now let's say you've just finished your cyber security interview. Now what? Well, this is the fifth challenge. What to do after an interview? Well, honestly, whether you get an interview or not, the action that you should take is the same. However, before I tell you what you should do, I want to tell you what you absolutely must never do. I had someone in my Discord server the other day telling me that he's done an interview and now he was ready to start messaging the people who interviewed him on LinkedIn. And I was like, please don't do that. When you do an interview, you shouldn't be bothering the people who interviewed you and try to message them and ask them and email them nonstop. This is the worst thing that you can do. You are not the only person they've interviewed. And even if you were, cybersecurity professionals are really busy. The last thing they want to see is these random messages from someone they barely know. You should wait and show if they take a few weeks or a month to respond, then you can simply follow up with them that's fine, but don't just start emailing them and messaging them right away. People don't like that. Now, what you should do instead is you should continue your process of studying, of learning as if nothing happened. Now, this is easier said than done because I know studying and applying to jobs and interviews are things that will take a lot out of you. They are emotionally draining and it's normal to take things personal, but I want you to treat it like a professional on a mission. So your mission is to continue to study and learn and progress within your learning journey. Whether you're here back from the interview or not your journey is your journey you need to continue to study continue to look for jobs and continue to apply for jobs this is a much better investment of your time and brain cells and emotions than going on the internet and complaining that companies are not hiring and everything is crashing we both know that this will not help you and you know that the only thing that will help you is by doing the work that you know that you need to be doing. Which brings me to the bonus action that you can take to find those hidden jobs that don't get advertised. Now, not every job out there gets advertised for a number of reasons, but honestly, the main reason is that recruitment is very expensive. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money to advertise for jobs and interview and go through that process. So as hiring manager, if we can avoid that recruitment process, trust me, we will do that. So the way you can find those hidden jobs is by first targeting recruiters. So simply go on LinkedIn and add recruiters as connections on LinkedIn. You can send them a message and express your interest in a cybersecurity job and you never know, sometimes recruiters will have jobs that are not even advertised. Now the second thing that you can do is to get active in the community. I talked about that in previous videos but you need to go to cybersecurity events, meetups, conferences. You don't even have to pay, you can simply go as a volunteer. I've done it and I still continue to do it just to help out in the community. And when you meet people, you can express your interest in jobs. I know so many people who got hired this way. So this is something that you should definitely keep in mind and you should definitely try it. And honestly, it's a great way for you to break the route and get out of the house. Now, if you're serious about a career in cybersecurity and you want to completely turn your life around, then follow this video carefully because I created a clear step-by-step -step roadmap for you that will get you to land your first cybersecurity in the fastest and cheapest way possible and I'll see you there.